What time is it? Say it's time for KP's video news. KP's video news. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. That's right. It's time for KP's video news, y'all. I got a lot of lot of ground to cover here this morning. And uh one thing that, that you people gonna have to understand is they got a sweep uh that's getting already getting started and they're arresting people in mass numbers out there prior to the uh prior to the elections in the United States. So I'm gonna address that in my next video. However, get ready. It's gonna be a heavy, heavy issue. But this one right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start talking about some other issues. Uh, the Fort La Lauderdale cops had shot this lady in the eye with a rubber bullet, and uh, one Latoya Ratliff left her meeting with Fort Lauderdale mayor and city managers a week ago. Uh, she was prepared to provide a statement for the police department's investigation into the day one of his officers shot her in the face with a rubber bullet. And she thought the investigation was moving along. What she learned since has caused her to doubt that. Despite having asked Ratliff to participate in an, in an investigation multiple times, including a social media post by the since reassigned chief that called her out and noted her numerous media interviews, the police department has deferred completion of investigations into officer misconduct, including the probe involving Ratliff's industry suffered on May 31st, and the investigations have been told, uh, told meaning the 180-day clock for finishing the job is unplugged. Assistant Police Chief Frank Sosa told her, stated that the move is required by provisions of Ju uh, Governor Ron DeSantis' March 9th State of Emergency Declaration in, in conjunction with the statute known as the Florida Police Officers' Bill of Rights, which provides special protections to police officers. But that is not strictly true. What Officers' Bill of Rights ex explicitly states is that the internal investigations may be told during that time of emergency declared by the governor. If all departments in Florida law follow Fort Lauderdale's example, it could have profound implications for every investigation spurred by abuse complaints stemming from the civil unrest ignited by the death of George Floyd. Um, and uh, deferred investigation can lead to foggy memories and the unavailability of witnesses. But some departments have not told misconduct investigations in Officer Bill Wright says it's a choice, not a mandate. We had no idea that uh, that's something that they were doing, said Rathlis Spokesman. Evan Ross, who joined her at City Hall a week ago, Monday, and caught us totally off guard. And uh, Eliza Ram Ramos, the officer who shot Ratliff in the eye, in the eye socket, despite rules that prohibit firing rubber bullets at head level in non-lethal situations, remains on active duty in the meantime. So do the other 16 officers being investigated for their conduct at the protest, which uh, video shows escalated when an officer shoved a kneeling Black Lives Matter protester. The officer who did the shoving, uh, Stephen Pohorance, was charged by the state's attorney with uh, misdemeanor battery. Video from the scene appeared to show Ratliff walking away from the clash, fleeing a cloud of tear gas when she was shot, leaving her, uh, her gushing with blood from her eye. Uh, totally an investigation can simply mean extending the 180-day deadline for completion. The Miami Police Department, for instance, says that while it has told its internal affairs cases, it's still carrying out those investigations. All investigations are being completely and thoroughly and expeditiously as possible a spokesman wrote in an email to the Herald. That doesn't seem to be the case for Fort Lauderdale. The department told the Herald uh, that it had obtained Ratliff's statement. The plan would be to shelf it until the toll is lifted. The Herald all, uh, asked several 
South Florida Police Departments about the status of their investigations into alleged misconduct, and the Miami-Dade Police Department said its investigations are also told. At the Hialeah and Coral Springs Police Departments, there is no broad policy of tolling investigations at this time, but they still could toll individual cases as necessary, Representative said. Investigations at the West Palm Beach Police Department are not told. Ratliff was told that no officers had been interviewed by Internal Affairs, the unit responsible for the investigation. Ross said that isn't necessary, necessarily as a result of being totally dull, uh, because the police officer's bill of rights stipulates that officers who are a suspect of an investigation have the right to examine all statements and other evidence before providing a statement of their own. She has made it uh, clear that once the investigations are no longer being told, she has every intention of participating. In mid-June, Ratliff's attorney received a letter signed by Sergeant Luan Militia of, of Internal Affairs asking that she, that she schedule a time to be interviewed. The Office of Internal Affairs on several occasions attempted to contact the client via telephone and social media. However, we have not heard back from her. Uh, that's what they wrote. And also of Internal Affairs would like to speak with the client about this matter so we can properly investigate the situation. Uh, right now, this, this did not respond to the letter by July 7th. Internal Affairs will proceed without her, the sergeant said. Two weeks later, a statement from then Chief uh, Rick Maglioni was tweeted that seemed to take a jab at Rat uh, Ratliff for, for speaking to the media but not yet giving a statement to an Internal Affairs Around the same time, the mayor told the Herald that Ratliff had lawyered up, which is usually how people are described when they are on investigation, not when they have been wounded by a police officer, possibly fi uh, fired in a way that violates policy. In an email statement to the uh, Sousa wrote the following, no member of the city or police department is pressuring Ms. Ratliff to give a statement. We have always welcomed her input to it provide a thorough and complete picture of what occurred. We are committed to completing a fair, impartial, and transparent investigation. As stated, uh, the cases are told. Ms. Ratliff agreed to meet with the mayor and others this past Monday, such as the city attorney, reached out to the fraternal order of police to have Ms. Ratliff's statement taken. Despite cases being told, the FOP agreed, and the statement would be shelved until the toll is lifted. And uh, Christine Curry, chair, chairwoman of the city's police review board, which recommends disciplinary actions to, to internal affairs, did not find out the delay on investigations until early June when she questioned the, part, the department after noticing that the board's monthly meeting had been canceled. Though the board had not yet met since March because of the coronavirus, she expected the meetings to resume virtually that month. Even under normal circumstances, the disciplinary process for officers can take longer than six months, said Matt Puckett, executive director of the Florida Police Benevolent Association. Tolling is an added complication, he said. Having that law requires everything be wrapped up within 180 days is good because you get the kind of out from, uh, from under, you know, the s suspension of pay and the administration, uh, administrative leave that comes with it whether or not you're actually going to get disciplined. There's also another concern. Officers Bill of Rights provide subtle ways for law enforcement to get more time before being investigated and maybe come up with alternative explanations for their actions. And so to urgently build a, an improved justice system that ensures fairness, promotes safety, and strengthen communities. If, uh, if they're also essentially tolling and giving officers days or weeks or months before their question about an incident, that's a problem. Police officers shouldn't have special protections from accountability that other public employees do not have. And Maglione, the chief of police at the time, Ratliff was shot with the projectile, was recently uh, reassigned amid the controversy over his handling of the case. He was replaced by interim chief Karen Dietrich. So... It's crazy stuff going on here. Crazy stuff. And here's another crazy one. It's got a self-described witch connected to a missing mom, Leela Cabot, 
and Leela Cabot was the lady that I talked about a few days ago that came that that was missing, and uh, she was from Georgia, but she um, uh, her baby was found walking around in Florida, and her relative said she doesn't know anybody in Florida. So follow up on that. Federal authorities have charged a man who repeated uh, reportedly describes himself as a witch with lying to officials as a uh, search for information regarding the disappearance of Georgia mom Leela, Leela Cabot continues. Officials arrested uh, Shannon Ryan on Saturday for alleged lying to federal agents and he's now in custody of the Broward Jail in South Florida. Ryan, 38 years old, has claimed to be the last person to see Cabot, uh, 21 years old, before she went missing last month, but denies having anything to do with her disappearance. Authorities have not said whether Ryan's arrest is in connection with Cabot's disappearance. The FBI investigators are searching for Cabot, who was seen uh, on July 25th. When her two-year-old son was found outside barefoot by an apartment uh, complex in Miramar, Florida on July 26th. A man appearing to be Ryan, who is not charged with hurting or kidnapping Ryan, addressed the FBI investigation in the 51-minute video shared to social media. I know they're trying to make a connection of uh, me to her, Ryan said, according to the, and to and, and you're going to find you wasted your your uh, your time when you could have been looking for her. Ryan, who was from, uh, from Muscle Shoals, Alabama, has reportedly claimed uh, and, you know, some other, other, a bunch of other crazy stuff, a bunch of other crazy things. And uh, some some sick stuff going on, I'm telling you. Some real sick stuff going on. So even with that, you know, we still have to uh, try to do some good things here. And we had a, uh, uh, this one good positive story. We got the first African American in the NFL history to become president of a team. And the Washington football team, formerly known as the Washington Redskins, has appointed Jason Wright as team president. He is the first African-American in the, in the NFL history to become a team's president. In this role, Wright will be responsible for leading the organization's business division, inclu including operations, finance, sales, and marketing. He would join coach Ron Rivera, who maintains uh, all on-field responsibilities and football decisions in reporting directly to team owner Dan Snyder. If I could cu uh, custom design a leader for this important time in our, in our history, it would be Jason. His experience as a former player, coupled with his business acumen, gives him a perspective that is unrivaled in the league, said Washington football team owner Dan Snyder. We will not rest until we are a championship caliber team on and off the field. Jason has proven track record in helping business businesses transform culturally, operationally, and financially. He is proactive and assertive advocate of the inclusion of all people and will set new standards for our organization and for the league. There could not be a better duo than Jason Wright and Coach Rivera as uh, we are sharing the new, new era for Washington football. Wright spent seven years as a running back in the NFL with, uh, with San Francisco, Atlanta, Cleveland, and Arizona, where he was the Cardinals team captain and the labor union representative uh, during the league's 2011 uh, lockout. Upon his retirement from the, from the gridiron, he received his MBA, graduating with high honors from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business and building on his undergraduate studies in psychology at Northwestern University, where he was also an academic All-American and captain of the football team. He went on to global strategy and management consulting firm McKinsey & Company where he quickly ascended to being named partner in the operations practice based in Washington, D.C. In addition to steering some of the world's most influential uh, chief human resources officers, uh, chief financial officers, and, and chief security officers to transform environment environments, modernized operations, and increased businesses' value. He spearheaded the Black Economic Institute at McKinsey, where he occasionally co-piloted their anti-racism and inclusion strategy. Jason is the trustee of the Union Theological Seminary 
where he helps the institution better equip students with community organizing and social entrepreneurship skills. That's right. So we have, that was uh, uh, Jason Wright. Jason Wright doing big things in the NFL. He's, uh, you know, big operating officer over there. So he's doing his job. The organization's business division, he's doing his thing over there. The first, the first African-American in NFL history to become president of a football team in the NFL. So congratulations on that. I'm telling you, man, it's some, some good, it's, some, it's a few, it's a lot of crazy stuff going on, but there's some good stuff going on out there too. So we got to comment on it all. Can't be video news. Peace.